Are you scared to put out content into the world, afraid what people might say about it, about you, scared that your business just might not work or this whole audience building thing isn't for you? Welcome to the club, my friend. I have been scared since day one of my business, and today I'd like to talk about that fear. Let's dive in. Welcome to episode 53 of The Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build your online business, work less, and live and Give more to the things and the people you care about. I'm your host, Graham Cochran. As always, pumped to hang out with you today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Um, I really appreciate all the feedback I've been getting from you. In the last couple of weeks, I've been trying to just dive in and help you where you are, speak to the moment that we are having as a culture And uh, the feedback has been super encouraging, um, and it's just firing me up to continue to dive in. And so uh, I'm going to dive in into a more personal, more transparent episode today. Um, So if you care to know about Graham's feelings, then we'll talk about some of those today. Maybe this will help you. My hope and my aim is for this episode to really encourage you with a really important topic, which is the topic of fear. But real quick, before we dive in, I want to make sure you have this. I've put together an online income jumpstart guide. This is a 30-day, four-week, step-by-step plan to make money, even if you've never started your business. So you can go from nothing and no audience to launching your online business in the next four weeks. And I tell you what to do step-by-step. It won't be a complete day job replacement in four weeks. I can't promise you that. But I can promise you that if you follow these steps and do what I say, you can make your first bit of revenue in your online business, even if you're starting from scratch in just 30 days from now. It's a simple, simple PDF. It's literally checklist. It's bullets. There's not a whole lot of reading you have to do, so don't worry. It's not a textbook, and I want you to have it. It's absolutely free. I figured this would be the best way I could help you right now is get some free training into your hands, and you can grab it for free by hitting the link below if you're watching on YouTube, or just go to grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart to get my 30-day online income jumpstart guide. GrahamCochran.com slash jumpstart. A ton of you have been downloading it. I know it's been helping you out a lot. I'm really excited to get this material into your hands. Okay, let's talk about fear. Um, It's okay to be scared. It's okay to be scared to put yourself out there in the world. Um, How do I know that? Well, because I sure as heck am scared. And... um, I understand that being uh, an influencer, and I hate that term, but it, it it carries truth, right? I have influence in the world, as do you, by the way. Even if you don't have a podcast or a YouTube channel, every one of you are influencers. The people that are in your circle of influence, as they call it, are being influenced by you, whether you want that to be the case or not, for better or for worse, negative or positive influence, it's happening. So we are all influencers. Uh, the difference is just how many people we touch, but the 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 responsibility is the same. So I feel the weight of responsibility um, as someone who puts on a microphone, gets out a camera, and, and teaches and shares. I have paid courses and memberships. I have one-on-one coaching clients and students. I feel the weight of responsibility in teaching and sharing. And while I try to be as honest and truthful and humble and direct as possible to help you, it is inevitable that to some of you, I might come across as quote unquote, having it all together. Or the worst would be that you assume that I'm just creating a veneer uh, of having it all together. And deep down inside, I'm a wreck. Well, to be honest, that is very much true in the sense that I am a messed up human being. You just don't get to live with me and see that, right? Just ask my wife, ask my kids. While I know they love me and respect me and esteem me, at least that's what they tell me, (laughs) Um, they see all my warts. They see all my dark side. And I am a sinful human being. Uh, I have brokenness. I have greed. I have a bunch of other messed up things about me. And by God's grace, I am being transformed and and grown and and shedding some of that. And I'm being... um, 
I'm growing into the man that I feel like God wants me to be. So I'm far from perfect. But I also know that by teaching, it assumes that from the learner that I have it all together. By telling you these last few weeks, go deep with your audience, build your audience, go live, show up more than ever before, it can come across as if that's no big deal to me. As if, man, Graham doesn't struggle with this at all. If you are brand new to creating content, it is scary. And so you might be thinking, that's well and good, Graham. I'm sure you have good intentions, but I'm really scared to put out my first video. I'm really scared to get a microphone and start a podcast. Um, and so what I thought I would do today is share with you four key moments in my business journey and uh, in my life in the last decade, decade plus, that I've been very afraid. And I want you to see a pattern that evolves throughout these four moments in history. Uh, maybe this will be shocking to you. I don't know. Maybe this will be enlightening to you. My hope is that whatever it is to you, it is encouraging to you. That is the most important thing I hope to do with this single episode. Okay. When I started my first online business, The Recording Revolution, it was back in the fall of 2009 during the last recession, the great recession of 08 and 09. And I had just lost my job, the second job I had lost in a year. Okay. Granted, I was about to quit the previous job and move to Florida, but they laid off an entire department before I could even quit. Um, so it wasn't that economically sad because I was mentally prepared to quit anyway. But I, I got laid off in January of 2009 from a big tech company. And then uh, I was doing audio for them. And then in the fall of 2009, I was laid off from a financial company, a startup that I had finally got a job at down here in Florida after 50 interviews. So it was not a great year in 2009 for me, being laid off twice in one year, um, and finally having a baby, having a mortgage, moving to a new city and state, and having no source of income. So when I started The Recording Revolution, I started a blog back then um, on my freelance website where I would freelance and had clients recording music for bands. That's what I did for part-time income. It was more than just fun income. It was pretty good income, but I didn't need to rely on it. So mentally, I, I didn't have the pressure of a full-time income off of a business. But just giving you some context, I had that, that website, and so I added a blog to it, and uh, I started just writing about what I was doing in the studio with my, my clients that I did have, which were still a few. I was trying to get as much remote work as possible. And then a few months later, in January of 2010, I started my YouTube channel and started uploading videos every single week, um, trying to show people what I was doing and teach a bit about what I was doing in hopes that people would discover me. Um, turns out that was a really good idea, by the way. Uh, I thank the Lord for just putting that idea in my head. And um, my goal was simply to get more freelance work out of it, not to turn the videos and the content into an online business in and of itself. But I'm glad that happened because you can make a lot more money with digital products and you can one-on-one -on -one service. So I'm a big fan of digital information product businesses. Um, but when I started, the first area I was scared in was just flat out, I was afraid to put myself out there and, and start teaching this stuff. Even though I had been recording music for, at that point, six or seven years, even though I had a degree in audio production and music industry and I'd gone to school for this, I, I, I didn't feel equipped. I didn't feel credible. I didn't feel authoritative enough to start a YouTube channel and teach you how to record your music professionally. I, it was classic imposter syndrome. I would find myself saying, who am I to do this? Like, I'm not, I'm not an expert. Um, but I had no other choice. I had no income coming in. I had a lot of time on my hands. So I, I'm grateful in a way for being forced to do it because I had nothing else to do. Um, but I was afraid. Who am I to teach this? Have you ever felt that? Whether you've just started putting out content or you've been doing this for a couple of years, have you felt that twinge of like, who am I to be doing this? Who am I to call myself a, a business coach? Who am I to call myself a fitness instructor? Who am I to call myself a nutrition expert? I'm just, I'm just a normal person. 
I've got a sister-in-law who um, loves health and fitness and nutrition, and she's just a mom. She has three kids, and she's a great wife, and she's a military wife. And when I say she's just a mom, I'm saying that's the way she has views her, viewed herself in the past. I'm like, I'm just a mom. And we had conversations in the last couple of years about, you should start a business. You should start a YouTube channel on fitness and nutrition for women because she's really in shape. She's really good at eating healthy and planning meals. And it just comes naturally to her. She was a college athlete and it's just sort of her background. She's like, I don't know. Who am I to, to start a fitness channel? I'm not a fitness girl. That's not me. And yet, on the base where they've been at, in the multiple bases, there have been other wives and moms on their street that have come up to her and been like, hey, Ann, will you teach me how to get in shape? Will you teach me how to work out? Will you teach me what I should be eating? And so she's basically gotten clients. I don't know if they were paid or just for fun or for free, just because she's a friend, but it's the same thing. She was being asked to be trained. She was teaching people what she knew about fitness, nutrition, being healthy, as an active mom, as a busy mom, I said, oh my gosh, Ann, you have every ounce of credibility to create content online on the subject. Why? Because you've helped people before. That's all it is. But I'm just telling you, I was scared to death. Who am I to teach this? Now, you would think that that would go away. We'll get to that in a minute. You would think that that would go away. Fast forward two years later in my business, 2012 was the year that, 20, end of 2011 was the year that I started to see if like you're looking at a graph and it's like slow growth, slow growth, slow growth, and all of a sudden it starts to like, you feel that curve, like, whoa, I, I, it's not huge yet, but it's, it's becoming exponential in the last couple of months. That happened to me in the end of 2011, and I could sense this might actually work. But it was 2012 that things blew up and the business went from a year prior making one to $2,000 a month to making eight to $10,000 a month. And I became a six-figure business owner in my third year. And that was the year that we started to have fun. That was the year that we went out and bought another house that was bigger, that had more space for me to actually have a home office and and film content because the home we were in, we never bought for that purpose, right? You know, can I get an amen if you've ever had to work in a corner of a house with a crying baby and you're trying to like, keep them quiet, I'm trying to run a business here and film a podcast and a video, right? That was us for a couple of years. Then we finally had the money to buy a bigger house with an upstairs and had an office space. That was also the year we finally replaced one of our janky cars, bought a a nice minivan, oh yeah, cash, right? Um, And it was just a fun year. We took some trips. I remember that year, uh, 4th of July, just swimming in our our neighborhood community pool. And there was a DJ, it was fun. It was the, the day off, everyone's having fun. And while I'm in the pool, I know that I'm making a ton of money in my business. I was running a sale that day and money was just coming in. I think I made like 10 or 20K that day. And I'm just like, this is the greatest thing of my life. I'm in the pool, I'm eating hot dogs, and I just made 10,000 bucks this morning. That's incredible. So it was a fun year. That was the moment I felt like I made it. And I was, I was like, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened. If I never make any more money than this, I'll, I'll be happy. Um, but you know what's funny is I got really scared that year. When things blew up, when things got more successful, when in the subsequent years, people started to notice that I was successful and I got interviewed in a few cool publications and my story came out in a couple areas of, whoa, this guy's making some real money over here in this random hobbyist audio niche market. Um, I was afraid. Why was I afraid? I was afraid because you would think, Graham, you're making money. You're fine. Who cares what people think? I'm human. I was afraid that I just got lucky. I think that was the script I was believing in 2012, 13, and 14. Um, for Honestly, probably for five years. Probably from 12. Maybe I had too much fun in 12. I didn't really think about it too much. But by the end of 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, there was a four to five year run where I was just kicking butt, taking names, felt great, was really excited and both encouraged and confident while simultaneously scared that the reality was that I'm not smart, I just got lucky. That was the script. What if everybody finds out that I really don't know what I'm doing, that I just 
I got lucky. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe I just got lucky. People get lucky all the time. Not everyone who's successful is 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 sharp or is smart. They could have just gotten lucky. Um, what will they do? Because here's what's beneath that script. What will what will they do and what will I do if they realize that I'm still just a nobody? I'm still the guy from 2009, 2010 on food stamps, struggling to make a buck online. Nobody knows who I am. No one's ever heard of my business. What if they just realize that even though I have reached success financially and audience-wise, numbers-wise, what if they realize that I'm still just a nobody? I was afraid. I was afraid. That fear, that one, that's a tough one. You would think, again, that would go away when you reach success, but at least for me, it didn't. It just evolved into, oof, I don't want to be found out. Don't want to be found out. Are you there? Have you reached some level of success in your industry or your field, whether recently or for years? Do you feel like, what if you just got lucky? Do you feel like you need to act as if it was all your your plan and you were intentionally moving in this direction and you did these three steps and you became successful, but you're afraid that you just got lucky? And what if, what if people find out that you're just a nobody? The reality is, is that we all are in one way, shape, or form nobodies, right? Even your, your, your heroes, the celebrities that you, you adore for whatever reason, they were just normal people at one point. We're all just human beings. In one sense, none of us are special. We're all ordinary in one sense. We all come into this world the same way. Now, we may not all be given the same opportunities and privileges, and we, may, we certainly aren't given all the same talents and skills, but we all come into the world the same way. We all leave the world the same way, too. We, we come in with nothing. We go out with nothing. We're all ordinary in one way, shape, or form. Now, that might be depressing. I also simultaneously believe that we are all uniquely and fearfully and wonderfully made by God, as the Bible clearly tells us. So in a way, we are all uniquely designed and gifted with a unique and specific purpose if we just are faithful to obey what God wants for our lives. So I feel like there is a unique, specific path for you, but it's that weird both and, right? It's that weird tension of all of us are nobodies and all of us are somebodies. I don't know if you like the the Lego movie, the original one, right? Um, And they're all searching for the special there was this prophecy that one day the, there would be this one Lego person that, who'd be the special who'd be able to find the piece of resistance and stop, you know, uh, Lord Business, <laughs> played by Will Ferrell. Um, and the whole running joke throughout the movie is this guy is accidentally assumed to be the special and he's not. He's a nobody. In fact, he's the most nobody of nobodies. But he almost rises to the occasion because people think he's the special and in the way at the end, it's like everyone is the special, which means nobody's special. But it's, that's the joke of the movie is that we all have an important role to play. So we're both simple nobodies. We're all humans. We, are, we come into this world with nothing. We go out with nothing. And yet we're not an accident. We were designed by God to be born when and where and how and to the parents and in the country and in the place that we were designed to be born for whatever reason. I don't know what all those reasons are. I don't even know all those reasons for my life yet. All I know is what's in front of me, and I try to be obedient and faithful to where God's leading me. But you have a purpose, and you have a lot of value to offer. But still, there's that fear of, I know I'm a nobody. I know I'm ordinary. What if they find out? What if they find out? Another inflection point for me of fear came in 2016 leading into 2018, which was when I wanted to pivot into the online business space and start this brand. I didn't want to stop the Recording Revolution, nor have I. And by God's grace, that business has only grown (laughs) since 2016 when I started to get serious about starting another business. But I knew for my own sanity, I needed to start a second business, and I also saw potential. So for my own sanity, 
I love talking about business. My wife is a business owner, and and to a point, we love just talking about business all day long. At some point, it gets really old, and we actually get sick of it. We're like, can we just both of us not talk about work right now? Because it's like all we talk about sometimes because she has ideas and I have ideas and she shares wins and I share wins and she vents and complains about frustrations and I vent and complain about frustrations and all those things, right? But I love talking about business. I love helping friends with business. I love coaching people with business. I love doing this show. I love all of it, right? And so at the time, I didn't have an avenue or an outlet to really talk about business more intentionally because um, everybody only followed me for music and, and audio-related advice. So I said, man, I need to create my own resource, my own channel, my own YouTube channel, my own site, my own email list where I can just download everything I've ever learned and ever care about. And I'm learning now still download all that business stuff and help those people out so that I can just talk about what I like to talk about selfishly. So part of, and part of this podcast, I shifted into this long form podcast about a year ago is almost a selfish move too. I felt like the 10, 15 minute videos, while helpful to a certain degree, weren't the most helpful to you or to me. I wanted to go deep and have a deeper, longer conversation about certain topics. And so I was like, let's just do a podcast. But I also saw potential. I said, you know what? This could be a really good business. This could help a lot of people. And this is a massive market. This is way bigger than the the niche I'm in in audio. And if I've been able to make a good living in the the random niche, that's a hobby niche of audio and recording and music, I can certainly make a good living reaching a lot more people on a much more powerful topic, which is business, because it affects people's livelihoods and finances and and their work. Um, And I also saw a gap in the marketplace. While there are many great, smart business educators in this space, even in the online business space in particular, I said, man, a lot of of the stuff is garbage. A lot of this is self-centered. A lot of this is... um, you know, 10X this and hustle that. And it's just garbage. It's just bad advice. Uh, it's not whole, it's not a holistic view of how business relates to uh, family and health. Um, it's not really sustainable. It gets a lot of clicks, but it's not a way to live a life. And so I want to dive in and speak what I think is a more important truth about building businesses that actually serve your life while serving your customer, not the other way around. You don't want to build a business that then you are a slave to, um, to just hustle and grind or die and 10X this and 10X that. It's just not strategic. It's not smart. It's not healthy. It's not fun. So I said, this is going to be my angle. I'm going to go in here um, and I'll diversify on my business assets by having two businesses and I'll just enjoy life more. So I was clear about that. And you would think that having all the success that I had, at least materially, with the recording revolution, this would be a no-brainer. This would be easy. But my friend, I was scared to death to pivot into this space. Um, the reason why? Because the, here was the script then. Who am I to be teaching this since, it, A, it's already being done by so many people so well, which is the same script that all of us feel when we start into a, a topic or niche. Um, but it was, who am I to be to have two businesses? Am I not content with the one what are people going to think? Are they going to think he's just greedy? He just wants more money and his his first business is not enough money? Or, oh, he's just arrogant. He thinks that because the recording revolution turned to gold, he can just go over here and touch this and that'll turn to gold. Who does he think he is? Like These were literally the, the scripts, the fears I had in my mind. What will people think? And then internally, I was afraid that I couldn't pull it off. Am I biting off more than I can chew? Will this make my my, my work life more hectic? Um, will I fall behind on my my recording revolution business? Will that suffer? Will I not even be able to do this new business well? Will both suffer? Is it smarter just to keep one than to try to do two at a mediocre level? I was super afraid, super afraid, and that that's what part of that is what led me to have the idea clearly in 2016 and not launch for two more years into 2018. I didn't launch this brand officially until January of 2018. So. There you go. Scared to death. And that brings me up to today. Um, I am still afraid every time I put out a new piece of content. And the fear is twofold. What if people don't like it? What if it's just a bad idea? What if, what if I see something stupid in it? What if I say something that um, is actually incorrect, which I've done plenty of times? 
what if I say something that somebody totally disagrees with and they just come hard at me, which has been happening since day one. Welcome to the internet. But the fear, the fear doesn't go away. The reality is that's gonna happen, especially if you're smart and you make polarizing content. That by nature is divisive. It, it splits people into two camps, people that love it and people that hate it. So um, but that's so good for business, by the way, and it's so good for you and all that good stuff. But man, it's still scary. Um, I'm also scared of looking like an idiot. I want to, like I think most people, unless you're a, one of the few weirdos out there that I envy, I care what people think about me. I care about my image, right? And I don't like to say that out loud because it sounds vain, but if I'm honest with myself, I genuinely care about the way I'm portrayed. So I don't wanna make a fool of myself I want to be viewed as helpful. I want to be viewed as, and we all have our own list of what we value, right? Some people, I want to be, I want to look attractive and that's the most important thing. And while I like to be well-kept and be attractive and I don't want to look like a bum in, in the sense of like, man, does he shower? But I, I care more about, do people think I'm smart? Do people think I have a lot of value to offer? Do people think I'm worth listening to? Um, do people think I'm wise? Do people think I'm successful only because success I view maybe correctly, maybe incorrectly as a, a credibility factor, right? Especially if I'm teaching you online business, right? Anybody can put up a video and teach you about what you should do to grow your business or make more money or reach six figures or whatever. But why should you listen to them if anybody can make a video on that? Why should you listen to me? Well, I think about that a lot. I feel like you shouldn't listen to me if I haven't been able to be successful in my own right or if I don't have an ability to get you results, right? So I, I, I care about being successful so that the material I teach has some more credibility. Um, and I feel like I have that, right? If I have a seven-figure business, I feel like I can teach you how to start and grow an online business, right? But I think about that a lot. I care about how I'm portrayed and how I'm viewed. Um, I'm afraid every time I put out a piece of content. When I put it out, I almost like close my eyes and cross my fingers. And then when I see if it does well or it connects or it, however metric you want to view, if it's number of views or if it's number of likes, if it's, it's just see, I mostly look at the comments and feedback I get on the videos and on the podcast to see if it's connecting with people and resonating. Then I know, wow, this really connected. Um, but until I get that feedback, I'm afraid. What if it's just a dud of a video? What if people are like, yeah, you had me the last couple of videos, Graham, but this one, I don't know. So I think about that a lot. So I've been afraid since day one. <laughs> if you've been tracking, I am still afraid. I'm still scared. I was scared when I began. I was scared when I was successful. I was scared when I pivoted into something new, even though I had been successful. And I'm scared every single time I hit publish. So that basically says that you're not weird if you're scared. You're not unique if you're afraid to hit publish or to go live or to virtually raise your hand and stand for something, which is what you're doing when you create a good online business. You are standing for something and you're standing against something. You know, it might not be in a very controversial niche. It might not be religion or politics, but it certainly will only be successful if you truly believe in something and stand for something. And that's going to invite criticism. And even if you don't get criticism, it is still scary because of the potential of criticism and insecurity of like, do I even know what I'm doing? Who am I to be doing this? So I want to first validate you that it's normal to be scared and it's okay. You're in good company. At least I like to think I'm good company. Um, and then briefly, I just want to share how do you act in light of that fear? Because the last thing I want you to do is to give in to that fear. The number one thing I've learned about fear in general, but especially in particular when it comes to putting content out there on the internet, is you don't listen to it. It's never right. It's never, never right. Um, if you listen to fear, that will that will determine the fate of your business. And I can almost predict what that, that fate is. Um, 
low or no growth, and within a few months or a year or two, it's done. That's most people. Grandma tried the online business thing. Didn't work. I would say 90% of the time, if I'm just going to make up a statistic, it's because they focused on the fear the entire run that they gave it. I'm afraid I won't know uh, what content to make. I'm afraid my product won't sell. I'm afraid that I don't know how to write the right sales copy. I'm afraid that my email funnel is not good. I'm afraid that my website's not good. Fear, fear, fear. That's what they were focused on. Not to say that those fears aren't real. Okay? I, I'm, I'm scared every time I release a piece of content, every time I make a product, every time I write sales copy. Will this work? I don't know until I put it out there. There's fear there. But I'm saying they focused on the fear. What I don't want you to do is that. Instead, I want you to acknowledge the fear. I'm scared, but you know what? So is Graham. Somewhere out there right now, Graham is in Tampa and he is afraid about something he's doing with his business. If he's afraid, I can be afraid and that's normal. But the difference then is what you do is instead of focusing on the fear, which is an internal, self-focused, narcissistic view, you flip the script and you think about others, specifically your audience, the people you could be serving. If you don't put out your content, who's going to miss out? Huh, have you ever thought about that? You're afraid by default if you put out your content, what if it's not good? Well, ask the opposite. If you don't put out that piece of content, who is going to miss out? Who needs to hear that message from you? Even if it's just one person. Even if it's just one person, why should you punish them by withholding that piece of content? Why would you do that? If you saw, if you're walking past the lake and you saw 10 people drowning, And realistically, there's only one person you could save. The rest of them are gone, but there's one person whose hand is still out. Would you walk past those people and say, ah, what if I fall in? What if I can't help them well? What if I pull them out and it's too late and you just let them drown? Would you say, oh, I can't save all 10 of them, so I'm not going to try to save that one that's closest to the shore? No, that would be cruel. If you if you see them, you have an opportunity to help them. Even one of them, you jump right in and grab that person and pull them out, even if they're a complete stranger. Why? Because if you could help one person, why wouldn't you? Right? This is that extreme reach barrier, right? This is this is a psychological behavior. We we start to look to the extreme. Oh, I can't make everybody happy. Might as well not put out a video. Can't rescue all 10 of those drowning people, so I might as well not even try to rescue the one. What? That doesn't make sense, right? Like if we if we say it like that, it doesn't make sense. But that's what we do with our content, with even going online in the first place. I don't, I can't help everybody. I'm not gonna be the biggest. It's already being done before. Um, not everyone's gonna like it. I'm not as advanced as those people. I can't help everybody that's further ahead than me. Okay, yeah, great. Would you stop thinking about yourself and all your deficiencies for one second and think about someone else? Who can you help? Can you help one person? There are people out there right now on Google, on YouTube and Google who are typing in their deepest, darkest fears, who are typing in their biggest pain and frustration, who are just typing in flat out, I don't know how to do this, hoping that someone has put together a tutorial or a training on how to do that, even if it's as simple as changing the toilet handle on on your flusher little handle thing like I did a couple of weeks ago because I'm an idiot and don't know how to do that stuff. But thank God for YouTube. There are people right now around your topic and niche that you could help, that need your help. They just don't know that you exist yet. Why would you punish them by not putting out a piece of content just because you're scared? Right? Some of you And I've had this fear. I've had this conversation with my wife a bunch, especially when I started this business because I was so used to massive numbers of people watching my videos and a big YouTube channel and a big email list on the Recording Revolution. And then you start from scratch in a totally different topic that doesn't translate your people over. That couldn't just import all those people into this business. I had to literally start from scratch like you. And I'm like, man, I got only a couple hundred people watch that video, babe. I'm used to like 
a million or two or half a million or 300,000 on these big videos. And she's like, babe, you just started. And babe, you had 300 people watching that video. And I had to be reminded the simple truth that if I had 300 people right here in my office, quietly listening to everything you had to say, that would be incredible. That's a lot of people that you'd be influencing, 300. Even 50 people, can you imagine if you only get 50 views on your video on YouTube, but you have 50 people, what if those people were in your living room? You are sitting on your couch and they're all just, oh, excuse me, they're sitting on your couch and on the floor spread all around and you're standing in front of your TV looking at those 50 people. That'd be a lot of people in your living room listening to everything you say. That's a huge audience. That's a lot of influence. You have to remember that every number is a real person. And while you might be scared to death to put out your content, welcome to the club, you still need to focus on those people that you could help, even if it's just one person. So as you're thinking about creating content, as you're diving in to build your business during this craziness that we're all experiencing globally, even if this is two years from now and you're just still in the throes of creating content and growing your brand, which you should, that never stops, right? Just know that it is normal and okay to be scared. I don't know if that fear ever truly goes away. It hasn't for me. And I've put out thousands of pieces of content. It hasn't gone away for me. The difference maker is those who are successful are those who ignore the fear after they acknowledge it. They say, yep, I'm scared, but now I'm going to ignore it. Instead, focus on my audience, how I could help them, even if it's just one person. Would this piece of content help one person? That's what I had to think about with this episode. Sure, I could focus on the people that are going to be like, I'm not scared. I don't need this. Okay. But I know that if you're listening to this and you're still diving in right now, you've stayed with me to the end, I know that this resonates with you. And I know that this is important to you. And if this just helps you, then it was worth it. That's why I create content. You don't need to blow up. You don't need to have a million views. You need to help people genuinely and consistently. And you can do that while being afraid. I hope that helps, my friend. Let me know if you're watching on YouTube. Leave me a comment and just say, if you have been like me, if you're afraid to put out a piece of content and you've been afraid to start your business, just virtually raise your hand and tell me what your biggest fear has been uh, related to that business. And, and we can all empathize with each other because I've been there. Uh, and if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, leave me a review. I'd love to know that you're listening. I'd love to know if this episode was helpful for you. And if you need step-by-step -step training right now on how to create content that really connects with your audience, build your brand, and go from no audience to making some money in the next 30 days, And would you please download my 30-day online income jumpstart? It is a free step-by-step -step four-week checklist that's really going to help you out. The link is below in the video, or just go to grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart and get your download there. As always, thanks for liking and subscribing. Thanks for listening and leaving your reviews. I appreciate your time. I'm praying for you. Uh, I hope you are safe. I hope you are healthy and I hope you are well. And uh, I cannot wait to talk to you on next week's episode. Take care.